Hey guys and gals, fans and friends, welcome to Bob's Barn Workshop. Today is the 4th of September. Yes, we're into September. What are we going to do today? Well, I was a big fan of CB radio back in the day, and there's a recent resurgence of CB radio use. And I was thinking, well, how do I make a base station for my house without being obnoxious? Well, a friend of mine is a ham operator. And he says that a vertical dipole has 6 dB of gain. And we talked about this. And here's what I'm going to do. I have, which is hard to see, a 102 inch stainless steel whip antenna. And I have a 10 foot section of antenna mast with about 4 feet bolted onto the bottom. What I am going to do is I'm going to cut this lower section to 102 inches. I'm going to take this bolt out and separate this junction. I'll probably just cut it because it'll it's going to be nasty. I'm going to connect the sections together with about a one or two inch gap with this PVC. This PVC is just perfect. Inch and a half fits over that. So that's how I'm going to couple. It's going to be my insulator between those two pieces. This lower part will clamp, which I only see a small part of it here, my chimney mount that's going around my big chimney on the back of the house. And I'll show you that later when I get in the process of installing this whole thing. That'll isolate that lower section from the upper section with the PVC, which will be my ground plane lower element, my lower vertical ground element. Um, my dilemma I is this connector. This is I just a CB trucker antenna connector. If you look carefully, it looks like it's going to be hard to fit. See, I want the coax inside so it's protected. The problem is going to be it's going to be hard to fit that connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this matching holes in the center, short bolts in here to, to screw this to there with a couple of washers under there so it centers the pipe, the connector in the pipe. Excuse me. And then I'll put my U-bolts around it too, just for a little security, and make that joint really tight. I'll cock this up, my, my coax will be completely protected. Now let's go around back and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bird's eye view of what we're going to do. So this is what my chimney looks like. Now I haven't got them installed yet, but I've got some of those strap type connectors to go around near the top. I'll have to be below, um, below that step section with my two corner mount things here spread apart to the appropriate distance so that the active element is up above here. And what's nice is my coax can loop right down that. You see that stainless steel uh, chimney cap? We don't have a wood furnace anymore. I took it out and put an LP. So that's unused. So I'm just going to drop my coax right down the chimney into the basement where my radio shack is going to be. So all I'll have is one vertical pipe with a small whip on it. I'm going to paint it, as you can see, the color of the sky today. I'm going to paint it a light, dusty gray color. And uh, that should camouflage it as well as I can. It's on the back, kind of on the back side of the house. Out of sight, out of mind. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Let's get to building it. Let's go to Bob's Barn Workshop. All right, before we start cutting and building anything here, a little explanation of antenna theory. Okay, a lot of antennas, especially for CB, are what they call a quarter wave. Now, if you look carefully, this here is a stainless steel CB antenna whip that you usually see on trucks or cars which is 102 inches long. That is a quarter wave of the average frequency for the CB channels. So what you're trying to do is there's 40 channels, you're trying to tune this to be 
dead on at the mid channels like 19 and 20 and then whatever slight variation you are in wavelength between channel 1 and channel 40 you just have to live with because you can't tune on the fly of course. So what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to cut the mast the same length as the whip. So the next thing I want to do here is this is the typical trucker antenna mount. The, the whip will screw into this and the coax will screw into that. And what I want to do is I want to drill holes and attach this so it comes just like so. And The coax can come through the center, but I want to think what I want to do is I want to drill a couple holes here and tap it right in here like that. And I need to space this out just an eighth of an inch or so so that so that there's room for this curve and there's room for the coax to screw on here. So what I'm going to do is get my coax out. And I'm going to shove it through the pipe, so keep looking for it. I got some really nice coax here, some small R mini RG8. how big that connector is compared to the nut. This nut right here. When I put this together I'll put some uh, silicone on this so that it seals it as good as I can. Alright, that's just temporary. Now see that would clear if I did it up high like that. But I'd really like to pump it out just a little bit and get it down tight, get it down tight like that. If you notice, there's that little radius in there. This being aluminum, it'll never corrode. So before I put this all together permanently, as I said, I'll tighten all this stuff up tighter than bejesus here, because that's got to be my ground into the, into the lower element here. All right, so i got to figure out how the heck to drill and tap this. So I'm going to drill this first and then I'll center punch onto my pipe and then I'll drill quarter inch tap holes. Tap it, put in quarter inch stainless bolts that I happen to have. Actually they're machine screws but I'll tighten them with my impact and get them real tight. Alright? Alright, let's work on that now. Alright, so a little layout here. What I'm going to do so I want to put this right down the middle, see? So I'm going to measure this. That's 210, so it's basically one inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the caliper to one inch and five thousandths, just to be kosher. And this isn't probably the right way to use this tool, but I'm just going to make a scratch line. And then I'm going to measure to the center of that, set it, lock it, and I reach it. Yeah. It does, that's not really that important.
Now, I gotta find out what my quarter inch tip drill size is. Hold on, I gotta check. Alright, so what I did is I brought my fence up so this thing can't spin around on me and spank me. This is really soft aluminum. I did use a center punch to make a hole so this won't wander. There we go. careful too, those spiral shards coming off from that drill bit, if they get whipping around, they will actually slice you like a razor. I should be wearing shop gloves, but I'm not. This bit is really dull because this aluminum is getting really hot. <laughs> but it don't matter. It did what it's supposed to do. Alright, I'm going to ream that hole out just a little bit. Got a little burr on it because the bit was so dull. Boy, that thing is hot. Duh. Alright, I gotta find a big drill bit here. Which any other time they'd be all over the place. But now that I want it. Here's just here's a, a wood bit thing. Alright. Little when I'm soft, I think I'm gonna hurt these bits. Get them. Boy, are those crooked, but I'm going to clamp it onto the pipe straight and tap from there. Okay. All right, what I did is I laid this on here and I eyeballed the edge so it was parallel and I pushed it down far enough that it would be on here and then I took my pencil and I made my marks. I made a center punch out of a piece of rod that I had. Center punched it. Now I put a tiny drill bit in here to try to... Yeah, and this pipe is soft. So I'm just going to take it very slow. And get my first holes through. Okay. I don't have a number bit set, so a number seven is the appropriate size for this. But that little bit of metal probably makes all the difference. What I'm doing is I put my other wrench on this, my T-handle, because that other wrench was gouging into my hand pushing down so hard, so I've got great downward force here. And I'm slowly just pushing that baby down, trying to get her to catch. And I don't want to wobble it around and strip out my threads either. Oh yeah, she's I think she's catching now. Because it's kind of got to drill its way in to get started. Oh yeah. There she goes. Taking it easy. I don't want to break this tap off in there. That would be disastrous. Right. You turn and then you back up and you can feel it cut the burr. And you turn and you feel it cut the burr. And you turn and you feel it cut the burr. And there we go. Because this uh, middle is thin. I'm going to get my coax in here. Get my cough. How do I 
we got here? I got some cheeky silicone. That'll be all right, won't it? Fine. It'll be fine because it's going to get painted anyway. All right, got my caulking. Got to get my connector. I tested out one of the sideband radios. I bought a an old Lafayette Telsat 140 SSB, which is a sideband radio. And it's a real gem according to the all the reviews and CB gurus. I'm gooping this all up. I'm gonna have to get a dirty finger here. Because I don't want water to infiltrate this connection and corrode it. So I'm trying to prevent corrosion here is all this is about. So I want to get a good seal all the way around all the joints. Push it in. Alright, now if I was smart I'd just wait until that dried, but you know, I'm in denial of smartness here. All right, what do you think? Does it look like a plan? Now I gotta try to get this crap together. <sighs> Without creating a huge mess. Boy, you think I can be clever enough to drop that on there with those washers in place without banging them all over the place? Of course not. But I'm gonna give it a try. There's one in. And there's two. Hey, it might be smarter than you thought. I might be smarter than I thought. Oh, baby. I love it. Plan comes together as they used to say on a team. Now, how dare tight do I get these without stripping my pole? Boy, that's sweet. I don't need anything. Else. I got some U bolts to go on here, but I, I'm not even going to use them because they'll just rust and I think that's perfect what do you think you like that I love it okay uh, I'm gonna goop this whole area up to keep the infiltration of water out Induction between the two of them to suck up water then I'm gonna do it right around the base of this connector oh dear so I do have one dilemma I installed all this before I drilled my holes through the pipe. Because I have to drill quarter inch holes through this pipe now for my uh, coupling. Because what I'm going to do what I'm going to do sorry about the waddle waving the camera all over the place is I'm going to drill a hole in here big enough for the head of that cable to come out. I'm going to leave about a two inch gap between the bottom piece and this and bring the coax out here and then down my chimney. So what I got to do is I got to drill holes through both of these and uh, hope for the best. What I think I'll do is I think I will drill one side, put a bolt through, drill the other side, Put a bolt in and just push my uh, coax side to side. It'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. All right, I'm going to drill a hole for that coax. All right, head. well, I got lucky and I got thinking. I got Forstner bits in here. They're like a little hole saw by themselves. And that will run.
run true. So, I found a 7 8 that's exactly the right size. I really didn't need that pry original hole. I'm going to have to clamp this. Bumpy clamp. Just the right tool around the shot. So there we have the hole for our coax, all bored in our coupler, and I made the hole nice and clean so it won't uh, burr the wire, or will it? Um, it won't. Weaken the pipe. So one thing I didn't think about, how to get this connector through the hole that I just drilled. Well, all I did is I shoved a piece of wire through the hole and out the end, taped it to the end of my coax, and now hopefully that will help me get it. Ah, perfect. Get it out through the hole. That's going to come out right near the top of the chimney, and I have an old chimney that is unused. All right, so we're back. I put this in the vise so it holds it. It crushes the plastic down so it also holds the metal pipe. So. Boy, did I run those self-tappers in there? That works. That's all I got to do without drilling all the way through for this quarter inch bolt. But I think the bolts are better. Set up as straight as I can. All right, so I'm going to cheat on these. I put nylock nuts on these. So they won't undo. I got my speedy driver here. I'm going to cheat. Tighten them down good. What do you think, boys and girls? Now I'm going to get the saws off and cut those off. And now I just have to install the lower piece, basically the same manner. I'm just going to put it in the pipe vise here. Get my coax out of the way. Tight 
tighten her down good. I'm going to run the quarter inch drill bit right straight through these. that plastic pipe's gonna be strong enough. Hell yes. Alright. Doctor the quarter inch bolts here. Can't play it anymore. So, there you go. This part mounts in the chimney mount. This stuff's up above the chimney. There's the insulator. There's the dipole ground plane and the whip. The whip screws on right here. Here's my whip. I've got four of these whips. I think I'll put some anti-seize in these threads just to keep them uh, protected. So anyway, that's going to be my beast up in the air. I'm going to let this dry a little while. And I'm going to hit this wood. It's raining out today anyway now, so I can't finish up this project outside. But so, um, we'll make the installation another video. And uh, what I'm going to do is bring this outside and stick it against something on the ground to make it... Uh, vertical and we'll test the SWR on it right in the yard to make sure before I, it's a piece of crap and I put it way up in the in the air and it doesn't work. I don't see why it wouldn't work. I've built ground plane antennas like similar to this before and uh, they've always worked like gangbusters. Alright guys, so I bought a couple of beautiful sideband radios. Uh, I guess I said earlier some Lafayette Telsat 140 SSBs. And I have also have an old mobile that I'm going to put in the car sideband, um, which is a realistic TRC 451 sideband, and that's a beautiful old radio too. And it looks like to be its mint condition. It just needs some tweaking. Probably the electrolytic capacitor is another bad. So this is for the radio guys who know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not a big expert on it for sure, but uh, I just thought I'd build an antenna because from what I know. All right guys, see you later. Take care.